Welcome to Hyperscale Video Workshop. My name is Brett Green. Now, I've been mourning the loss of Wingnut Wings, as I'm sure very many of you out there have been as well. And I was particularly looking forward to seeing the release of their 30-second scale Lancaster kits. I was fortunate enough to hold the sprues in my hands at a couple of model shows, marvelling at the level of detail in the cockpit and also the uh, wonderful oil canning effect on the external surfaces uh, of the fuselage. But unfortunately that was not to be, well not within a wingnut wings box anyway. I still hold out hope that seeing as the kit was so close to release that another company will actually come out with the sprues in their own box. But in the meantime of course Hong Kong Models released a Mark 1 and a Mark 3 Lancaster in 30 second scale. I didn't quite have the chunk of change that was required to actually buy one of these kits. They're uh, around 450 Australian dollars. Uh, so when I saw that HK Models had actually released a cockpit uh, version, essentially the forward fuselage, at less than 100 Australian dollars, I thought that actually sounded like a bit of a bargain. So I ordered one uh, locally it turned up on my doorstep uh, this morning and I thought that I would just run one of my unboxing videos to let you share the experience of uh, looking at the contents for the very first time. So the first thing about the box is it's quite compact, really. It's not very big. Um, so it's labelled uh, Avro Lancaster B Mark I Nose Art Kit. And on the side of the box we have uh, four nose arts. I think two of them are Australian, so that works out well for me. Uh, one Canadian and one, uh, one RAF, so uh, that's pretty interesting. So let's have a look for the first time at what's in the box. Quite a sturdy box. And it's, uh, it's pretty much chock-a-block full of, uh, of sprues there. By the way, we're back to my talking head format because there seemed to be pretty much universal um, comment that they preferred me with the talking head rather than the white cardboard behind. So the first sprue in the box is a clear sprue and it actually gives you an idea of how big this aeroplane is in 30 seconds scale. That's big! That's big! Have a look. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but that that's a... That's a big canopy, <laughs> I tell you what. So we've got the um, the Astrodome uh, moulded in there. Uh, some frosted panel lines with uh, subtle riveting. We have the two uh, navigators blisters, one with the, uh, the two holes in it and one without. Um, there's the nose machine gun turret. Uh, we've got, uh, so I guess these are side blisters for the um, uh, for the uh, the side of the canopy. Uh, we've got a few windows, and we also have what appears to be, I think the um, the rear canopy or the upper mid canopy. But it looks like you'll have a bonus canopy to play with as well, which is nice. So that's the clear sprue, and uh, yeah, quite quite impressive. Looks good. Next up we have, separately bagged, the, uh, the fuselage halves. When I say fuselage, it's just everything pretty much from the forward of the wing route onward. So we can see, there it is, you can just get an idea with my hand that, um, I mean it's not huge, it's quite manageable, but there's going to be a lot of detail you're going to be able to put in there. So we've got a lot of moulded detail on the inside. Uh, the, the surface textures are really nice on there. It's quite fine recessed panel lines and recessed rivets. There's no oil canning, but uh, if you're feeling ambitious, you could probably do that yourself with a curved uh, hobby knife. So that's one of the, the fuselage halves. Uh, I don't know that there's any real need to take that one out of the bag because we've probably seen what we need to see with the one. Oh, here's another another clear... Oh, okay. So, HK models are also giving us... If I can open the bag. It's riveting, isn't it, really? 
Riveting. <laughs> it's a little joke. Uh, they've also given us a clear fuselage. So, oh, that's interesting as well. So, it, it's going to be very difficult to see, I'd imagine. It's like looking through the invisible man. But the exterior surfaces just have a couple of very fine panel lines with no rivet detail, no rivet lines. So you can see clearly uh, through that transparent uh, fuselage half. So it looks like it's just a one transparent fuselage half. Um, I won't be using that. But uh, it's interesting to have. Pop that down there. Next up, we have a bag with a couple of sprues. All of these are resealable bags, which I always appreciate. Uh, when I've reviewed a kit, I try to put them back in the bags or use the bags perhaps as a divider between two sprues. We have the um, the cockpit, uh, I presume that side is the cockpit floor, and it looks like that side might be perhaps the Bombay floor. There's a heap of ejection, uh, ejector pin marks. I think they're ejector pin marks in between some of those raised uh, grids, which are going to be lots of fun to try to get rid of. Although, I'd imagine that's probably going to be covered with bombs on the full-size kit, and you're not going to see it at all on this one. So nothing much to worry about there. Oh, this looks a bit more like uh, a floor section. So there's, once again, a quite a large floor section. We've got the instrument panel, uh, which looks okay, looks fine. And a few miscellaneous parts there as well. So it looks like we've got the, uh, the flight engineer's uh, instruments there. Might be upside down. Does it look any more sensible that way? I think it probably does. So that's the flight engineer's position. We've got the rear of the, uh, the forward turret and a few other bits and pieces as well. Now, another two screws, mostly from now on, by the look of it, it's mostly detail parts. So we have the, uh, the pilot's seat, uh, the pitot tube, uh, it looks like the radar there is quite chunky, probably replace that with some finer wire uh, and some other bits and pieces there. So the other sprue in that bag is the forward turret floor, uh, it looks like we've got some seats, some rails, the control yoke, uh, we've got scoops and so forth. So quite a lot of detail parts there. Next up is a single sprue in a small bag. And it looks like, um, once again, more detail parts for the interior. Not surprisingly, the vast majority of parts are going to be detail parts for the interior. Next up, we have... Um, some more sidewall detail. It looks like there's the radio there. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, radio and radar and, and bits and pieces. Another seat as well. So plenty of detail there. The final plastic sprue uh, is the, the jig, I guess, the stand for the nose. So if you want to create a workshop diorama, then uh, you can assemble this and the uh, the nose section will sit on top. So that's quite neat, really. It makes a lot of sense. I'm going to have to blow some of my, my um, hang hangar interior photographs up to 30 second scale so I can do some photos. When the model is finished, here we have one bag, separate Ziploc bag with... Harness straps, mostly, by the look of it. And a few detail parts as well. So, uh, that's a nice touch. It's not Edward, but uh, it's a start. And finally, we have the decals. So let me just uh, slice this open, because it's not a Ziploc bag. So I can see that the decals are printed by Cartograph, 
and uh, we've got heaps of bomb logs. I don't quite know why there's a separate nose section in the workshop with uh, with bomb logs and nose art on it. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're retrieving it for parts, <laughs> but um, but I'll go with it. Uh, G for George, S for Sugar, and uh, a couple of others as well. So uh, I've been up close and personal with G for George. I think I'll have to get some reference photos. So that's the decal sheet. Looks very nice. And the final thing in the box is the instruction booklet. Uh, that's going to be oh they haven't they haven't numbered the pages. Not to worry. Anyway. It's an instruction booklet. It has um, the spruce tree in there. It's got a, a color cross-reference guide with um, AK, Tamiya, and Gunzi, which seems to me to be a very suitable guide. <laughs> uh, certainly Tamiya and Gunzi are the, the paints I'm most likely to use. And um, yeah, lots of, lots of little black and white drawings to illustrate the, uh, the assembly sequence. So there we go. So I have already ordered the Edward Big Ed uh, HK Lancaster photo etch and um, uh, masking set from Hannans. So that should be winging its way to me at some stage soon in these COVID days. Uh, whereas it used to take a week or less, it's usually taking two or three weeks now. So I would imagine I'll probably be starting work on this sometime before the end of the year or maybe sometime in the new year but it's a very interesting prospect indeed the big ed set has parts for uh the interior it's got obviously the instrument panels the engineer's position uh it's got radio fronts it has also the um all the masking for the canopy uh which is absolutely necessary i think with this one uh and the harness straps as well so it's got some yeah pre-coloured uh, steel uh, range harness straps in there. The the steel range is a bit misleading as a name because they're actually very very soft, so they're uh, they're nice and easy to shape to uh, to the seat. Uh, I also have uh, Roy Sutherland's uh, Barracuda cast radio set for the Lancaster, and I'll be using that in this as well. So there's a project uh, that I'm looking forward to uh, getting started on. And, uh, and at less than $100, I think it's, it's actually reasonably good value. I probably never would have found the, the time to build the full Lancaster kit, uh, let alone the budget. So uh, it's, it's nice to be able to compromise and, uh, and have this where most of the detail is available to, to paint up and weather and have fun with. Well, from Hyperscale Video Workshop, that's it from me today. Brett Green, bye for now.